Hi, thank you for coming back to watch the Harma channel. Today we'll be talking about health, body and mindset. I personally have gone through some changes recently and I want to share that with you. Stay tuned and I will be right with you. Today's segment will be about health, body and mind and I have two great guests, Sarah and Jana, who are expert in their field and I will introduce you in a minute. Before I start, I would like to share that everything starts with your mind and then goes in your body and everything you eat goes inside your body. So this segment will be focusing on how do you change inside of your body before you change outside your body. And I have two important guests today. That's Jana and that's Sarah. Jana is a professional trainer and, and Sarah, who's a professional in health, we have a lot in common. We both had mold infection and, <laughs> yeah. um, and so many other things. But um, I'll let you guys introduce yourself and thank you for actually joining today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Jana, thank Hi. you for coming. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to come here. I love talking about health and wellness. So um, Tell them about you. Tell them about how awesome you are. Okay, well, I'm so awesome. <laughs> um, so I uh, have been training now for about 12 years. I majored in kinesiology uh, from USC and I have been running my own business as a personal trainer but now have edged into what I call lifestyle coordination. So where I really focus is helping executives and entrepreneurs determine and schedule and then prioritize the wellness services that are going to work for them as their life changes. I really see wellness as a living art so there's not one thing that you can do forever mm -hmm. that's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. And Sarah. <laughs> Thanks Harma, so happy to be here. Thank you. Um, my name is Sarah Cat. I'm a wellness consultant and I began my career in fashion design actually and um, and through some health issues I took a total career 180 in about 2013 and I went to the Institute of Integrative Health and Nutrition and from there I became a health uh, coach and consultant and now I founded two companies one is Mood Boards LA which is edible art that's infused with infused superfoods and the second company is Fly George, which is a private jet service and travel management company that takes an integrative approach to health and wellness. That's awesome. And um, the reason I have them here because um, I had gone through some changes that I think I have two more years to go and lots of treatment and lots of mindset shift that I had to go through. And this is the moment to share with anyone that you are going through anything, you're not alone. And I'm going to go deep and have them share with you their experiences. And so if you're watching this, please subscribe. If you think this is helpful, it's important for us to hear from you. So feel free to leave us comments as well. You and me met because what we both have or had, it's not something people have. A year ago, I didn't feel good. I have gone and me and you were going for a run and I used to complain to you. It's like, I'm doing this today. I'm going to see this doctor today. And then you suggested uh, do this blood test and a specific stool test. I did everything. I have seen um, cardiologists, urologists, neurologists. I have seen therapists. I have changed my diet, I will say seven, eight times in a year. And I'm talking about legit following a diet. Um, not only I couldn't lose weight and everybody's like, you don't have to lose weight. You look very healthy and it was something wrong with me. I could feel it and I have gone to many different doctors. I just couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I gave up and psychologically I noticed when I was so sick, I couldn't work anymore. I have few hundred agents and I am the leader. As a leader, you walk in, they're all watching you. If you walk in and you are in a bad mood and you just affect everyone there, right? Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't go in because I had no energy to go in. And my pain was getting worse and I was thirsty and I would get up at night six, seven times and then I would eat less, gain more. And, and ultimately I was unhappy. Mm -hmm. The bottom line, I was very unhappy. Mm -hmm. Until six, seven months ago, I saw my third GI doctor who did many tests and and this is if you don't have health insurance this is why I believe everyone who works and they deserve to have the basic health care um, I I do not like our health care system and I think if you don't have any insurance and even if you do there's you don't get the treatment you need and this is why I want this segment for them to learn 
what are the things you should do so you don't even have to see a doctor? Because mm-hmm. I'm fortunate. I saw the best GI doctor who, by the way, doesn't take insurance. All the tests, all the blood work, all the stool tests and extra, everything that he had done, it was all cash. And I was just thinking if I, if someone else, my own family member, if they're going through this, they can't afford this. How can they even find out what's wrong with them? And then not to mention the medication and the treatment. And I really want this segment to be about what are the things you should do to prevent to get where I was and and get out of it, you know? And is it like a one-time treatment? Is it a mindset? Is it something ongoing? And for someone like you that it's very into health and works out every day, as well as you meet so many people from thin to big to someone who works out more often and a lot of executives, they don't have time to work out or housewives and a mother who works a lot um, as well as maybe they're just with the kids. They can't eat healthy the way they should. And how do you just listen to your body and stay healthy? After all this test, I find out that I have a mold infection in my body. I had a leaky gut. Anything you can imagine that any GI doctor can diagnose you with, I have it. I had it. I have it. And I think I won't have it. I'm, I'm not even sure if I will ever. You don't ever, want it, whatever it is. <laughs> you do not want it. And um, we were in an event and um, I didn't know Sarah and it was pretty dark and we were both sitting and there was like a lot of people around us and it was a food and you're like, do you want some? And I said, I cannot eat it. And you said, why? Mm-hmm. Of course, I hadn't shared that with anyone except my partner. Mm-hmm. And I just said bluntly, I have mold. And I have a leaky gut. <laughs> and I was shocked. The yeah. first thing you said, you yeah, said, I was like, so do I. Something that I've had to struggle with as well. And one of the reasons that I went to school at Integrative Nutrition is that I just woke up one day and I was like, I can't feel like this anymore. And you feel like you're going crazy. Mm-hmm. You go to all the different Western doctors and they just want to like give you something to kind of put a band aid on it. Mm-hmm. You're not getting to the root cause of it. And it's like you're waking up every day tired your body hurts. I have two little kids I'm trying to take care of and you're, you get to a point where you're just at a loss, you know? And so it's always great to connect with someone that's been through it. And I'm sure there's so many people in the audience that are waking up every day and not feeling well and don't know where you can turn to. And so that's one of the reasons that I love what I do is to give people the tools to just become your own like investigator and really take your health and the power back of being a healthy person and free of disease. When you're unhealthy, um, your body, and if you even work out, you affect you. And then I think more, I try to work out more, eat less, Mm -hmm. and I just wasn't feeling good. And ultimately I became very depressed. I was very negative, um, very short fused. I just you get hopeless very you get so hopeless and the other thing that we talked about that night was is that when you do go get all these tests if you are lucky enough to be able to afford the naturopath Mm -hmm. and all the doctors that aren't included on your health insurance that you're paying tens of thousands of dollars for Mm -hmm. is they give you a stack of papers they're like okay here here you go exactly like here go in your kitchen and figure it out and then you're just sitting there going well i can't eat anything And so it's really important that when you see a naturopath to have a health coach that can kind of like help you decipher through all of this and, you know, come up with recipes and ways that you can incorporate it into your busy life. So I'm, I'm glad you're watching and I'm going to just dive in and ask them some specific questions. So hopefully you can learn and um, implement it in your life. And if you do have a health insurance, my suggestion is that don't focus on the doctor um, that your insurance covers. Go see a doctor who's expert at that field and um, also listen to your body first because I listened to all 40 different doctors. I was in so many different antibiotics. They gave me one, they're like 14 days later, you'll feel good and I didn't. 40 days later, I still didn't feel good and until I learned the things I cannot eat. I used to make fun of people that they said, I cannot eat gluten. And I came from somewhere else, you know, another country. And I was like, what gluten? We didn't even have that in our country. And what the hell is gluten? And I just think it's completely BS until my doctor said, you cannot eat gluten. (laughs) And I was like, you're joking. Like, what the hell is gluten? I literally didn't understand it. Just that taking out of my diet changed my life. And um, so I want to go back um, and talk to you. So 
tell, tell us about when lots of it, people that they have a big jobs, mm -hmm. what do you think is their struggle when it comes to actually working out? What do you see? What's their pattern? Um, so there's really two things that, that uh, stick out to me. Um, when entrepreneurs, typically perfectionists. Um, and so they're going to go, they're going to dive into all the research. They're going to say, high intensity interval training. That's what all the magazines are talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what I see on TV. Everyone's talking about it. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to do. Mm -hmm. um, or same thing with diet. Um, they're like, I'm going to do the keto diet. And they go hard for that. And um, it doesn't work. It ends up not working for them. Um, we were talking about it earlier yeah. before we started filming that mm -hmm. like she was doing high intensity normal training and it was just beating her body down and I do find that especially um, for entrepreneurs that like that raises your cortisol levels it's too much stress you're already under plenty of stress so um, that idea of being perfection and like getting on the best plan mm -hmm. it's like that the best does not really exist because no matter what research is being done they've never done research on you, how exactly. you woke up today. And that's different from a year ago. And that's going to be different, hopefully, mm -hmm. in two in years. Give yep. yourself well. a chance to evolve. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to give yourself um, I, I give yourself that space, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is um, the time and consistency. So people are like, no, I have to go and kind of time it into that perfectionist a little bit too. Mm -hmm. People are like, I have to work out for an hour. And like, it's really, it's instead of going to a fitness class or whatever, two hours a week or one, two times one hour each time, it's better to do five days a week, 15 minutes. So that's really where I've started to focus with the people that I work with mm -hmm. is um, I have some clients that I see strictly virtually and we're doing four sessions a week, 15 minutes every time. Mm -hmm. And we're getting better results than I ever did whenever I was seeing them two hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then other clients that I'm doing more 30 minutes. So kind of finding those resources. A big thing that I'm on is um, environmental architecture, which isn't like eco-friendly stuff. I mean, although I am into that, <laughs> um, but it's actually putting yourself in it. Like it's in choice architecture, making sure that you have things available that you're going to be able to use. So maybe it's a kettlebell that is actually in your living room and it almost looks like a piece of art and then you see it and you go pick it up. So like you said earlier, like, Oh, you work out every day. And actually I don't work out every day. <laughs> like I work out three times a week. Um, but I'm also constantly picking up heavy things because <laughs> I'll clean up after a client leaves my studio and it's like okay I get a couple of reps in there and um, yeah finding those ways to just integrate a better level of higher baseline of activity and knowing some of your like clients that mm -hmm. I know they're pretty powerful people they are um, what I noticed because I worked out with you and I knew that you have a monitor for their heart mm -hmm. you calculate their calories all day you have an app that helps them throughout the day mm -hmm. so which is the same thing I, I want everyone to understand is don't look at your body of like one issue look at it as a whole mm -hmm. and see what are your needs and as you mentioned like one person needs is going to be very different mm -hmm. so if you have a keto diet work for one person you can't just say that's going to be for me you have to design something for your body so my question to you is if someone says i'm working out or i want to get in shape mm -hmm. is that the same thing yeah um so I think like working out is like getting sweat, you know? Um, and then there's training that, um, that is more of a progressive nature. Like whenever we were doing our runs, like at first it was starting with just a workout. It was like beginning of quarantine. We're like, let's just get out of the house and like have Run. people that I can see still um, and enjoy their company. And then I started kind of training you because I started looking at my watch and I was like, oh, you know what, last time it was like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 30 seconds per mile. And then, oh, we did 10, 15 today. And then I kind of like made it so that, hey, last time we went sprints more, we were doing that. And like, we I, let's try to get more endurance training and let's be more consistent with our speed. So even though you can run faster right now, that means later you're gonna wanna walk. So slow down, let's do this, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, I think that's a big thing that people, it's great to just start working out. I'm always, like I was saying earlier, like it's about just getting started and not over analysis process of what's the best thing going to be. But then um, training is actually really like do, looking at these mm -hmm. metrics and having something be progressive in nature. Um, and then shape doesn't necessarily mean what's, what's going to, it's not an indicator of health necessarily. Someone can be um, not that healthy and in shape. 
um, as far as internally yeah. what's going on. And someone can be um, not in that great of shape, but they've started a journey of health and like their blood panels and everything would look better than the person who was in shape. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, they're like, they're, it, both things are kind of like two sides of the same coin, like relative. Yeah. But um, I definitely, like if someone says I work out, I'm always like, okay, that's good. But like, what's next? Even if you want to be in shape, you have to have a plan and what is that your body needs, right? And mm -hmm. you go, you grow with that. Um, I'm going to have a similar question for you. So if mm -hmm. someone says, I eat healthy, right. if someone says, I eat healthy, mm -hmm. or someone says, I'm on a diet, mm -hmm. is it the same thing? So when I first hear the word diet, I hear restriction. Mm -hmm. I like to get to the why of why you're doing something. Is it because you want to lose weight? Is it because you're not feeling well? Mm -hmm. um, are there other health issues going on? Like, do you want your physical body to look a certain way? Or is there something internally? Like, are you tired? Are you at the doctor all the time because you're not feeling well? You don't sleep well. A huge indicator is if you're getting sick a lot, something's going on with your immune system. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel bloated after you eat? Do you have pain after you eat? And it's like you're, and you could be eating healthy things. Yep, absolutely. And, and you're like, why am I not feeling like well? I told you? I got yeah. I got home from a trip that you know it was a lot yeah. of partying, mm -hmm. and I said I'm just gonna have a clean diet, and this mm -hmm. is before I knew what's wrong with yeah. me, and I boiled lots of broccoli, mm -hmm. and from lunch and snack at dinner I had broccoli. Uh, if you have SIBO. You know, you cannot eat broccoli. I don't the care how healthy it is. vegetables will send you it's, through the roof. I cried yeah, the whole night. Super and beautiful. I couldn't, I, because you don't think the broccoli did that, right? There are diets that are specific for healing your body that are for short amount of times. Like a restrictive diet indefinitely, you're setting yourself up for failure. So I would implore you that if you're having these more physical, internal health issues to get help with a naturopath, and, um, and if financially you can't afford that, I always say to start with an elimination diet. So no gluten, no corn, no dairy, no alcohol, <laughs> no caffeine. I know it no sounds fun. really tragic, <laughs> but it's really Hard important to. when you're doing a diet to think of it as short term because it's so restrictive that you're doing it for a specific purpose. And at the end of those three months of doing an elimination diet, really check in and see how you're feeling. If you're not feeling better, I really implore you to see a naturopathic doctor which is a doctor that takes a holistic approach to health and wellness versus a Western doctor that really they're trying to give you a band-aid to treat the symptom. They're not getting to the root cause of where it's coming from. Those are very good points. I had to cut those things and mm -hmm. initially I was fighting it. I was like, I'm not cutting alcohol. Like who wants to cut alcohol? And coffee, I mean, I had yeah. to have four cups a day. It was something was burning, mm -hmm. you know? So I, Elimination is the key because you just don't know what it is and you mm -hmm. have to clean up first and then you can reintroduce one by one. Right. But I want to ask you something. Um, this question is for both of you. Do you think working out or eating lifestyle, it changes as you get older in a sense of, of course, we know it gets it's different when you get older. When you're mm -hmm. 20, I mean, I used to eat food long sandwich, <laughs> Subway per, for lunch and I, my waist was 29, you know, mm -hmm. then I got to 35. I just looked at half inch sandwich. <laughs> I just gained weight, you know? So my question is, do you think what your body needs is different when you're 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 and on? How often that, does that change? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can speak for myself first yeah. for my own experience. And I'm sure there's plenty of mothers out there, but as you get older, you have a family. And I think that's been the huge, the biggest factor for me and a lot of people that I coach and clients is that you're not the priority anymore. And so it changes where you put everyone else in your family in front of yourself. And you can't, like, just like you said, being an entrepreneur or being the leader, being the leader of your family, you really need the energy. You really need to take care of yourself. Absolutely. And so even if it's 10 minutes a day, this is what I do. I have a morning ritual and an evening ritual. And this is the part beyond food that creates a healthy lifestyle, if you will, that it's not just diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. It also has to do with the mind and taking care of yourself and having deep self-compassion and self-care. So in the morning, I have a little ritual of 10 minutes where I do a guided meditation on Calm app or mm -hmm. even on YouTube. I mm -hmm. have different things that I'm really into the subconscious mind right now, mm -hmm. reprogramming. And so I have those 10 minutes in the morning and the 10 minutes at night. 
And just that little bit of time and making sure you carve it out for yourself, I think helps as you age and you're not the priority anymore. Jenna, what do yeah. you think? Um, I think that definitely it, it, it's shown that as you age, your hormones change, especially mm -hmm. women, like a lot of th changes occur. So um, there is going to be that, but I think more important, and I think you were talking about it a little bit earlier, Sarah, like you have to constantly assess yourself and, and go through that. So it's not so much age and change, but mm -hmm. it's all these different factors, family, work, all these things that cause change. So I think that at different points in your life, no matter your age, you're gonna have to change and adapt things, um, like your style of working out mm -hmm. or how you're eating. Like mm -hmm. I used to make smoothies more for breakfast and now I'm kind of more into the overnight oats. Um, I'm still into my coffee. Luckily mm -hmm. I don't have any, <laughs> right now, yeah. I don't have any reactions <laughs> to it and it's yeah. fine. And, um, and I'm generally with blood work and everything, healthy just listen to your body yeah, yeah which i think that like having those 10 minutes a day even if you cannot not do morning or night pick one mm -hmm. it that mindfulness helps you get to check in with your body and your own intuition Absolutely. so if you're not able to do that you've got external noise all the time you should eat this you should do this you should do that and that external is like go internal as you were saying mm -hmm. you know go internal and check in there's another video that I made before. If you want your exterior to change, you change your interior first. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't change outside if your inside needs to be changed, right? Mm -hmm. And it took me until I got to the point that my mind was ready to change. Once mm -hmm. I decided I will cut coffee, I will cut drink. I love to enjoy my life. I like chips. I like to eat what I like to eat, but mm -hmm. I had to change it so I can change inside. And, um, and for those of you who are struggling with that, um, I will say the basic way I can say it, you have to become selfish to take care of yourself so you can help others. I have a family member that she is trying to help everyone and she's broke. She has no money, she has no career, she doesn't even take care of herself. And one day I told her, I said, if in order to help others, you gotta help yourself first. Get out of, just be strong. So if that means being selfish, mm -hmm. just be selfish, take care of yourself. Because I, th I have three kids. I, I wanna be with them. I wanna be with my partner a long time. I have big dreams. And if I just didn't do this, I literally was crying because I was missing when they were in the pool. I couldn't sit there and watch them, you know? And so it doesn't matter what age you're in. It's just a matter of you take care of yourself. I want to go back to something you were saying, and it was actually advice that I had given my brother about two years ago. I have a niece, she's five years old, and she was three years old at the time, and he was, she was doing this thing that she's now sleeping in her own bed, but she would come in and cuddle in the morning. And he loved those moments, and he kind of was telling himself, you know, I don't want to kick her out, I don't want to continue on like starting to work out or continue working out. He's kind of been on and off with working out, which is totally fine actually too. Um, but I said, here's the thing, you're going to remember those moments of her coming in the bed. She's not going to remember, mm -hmm. but what she will remember is you being an example of making that time for yourself of getting up and working out. She mm -hmm. said, Oh, she doesn't say when she's 16 and maybe she's doing sports or whatever. No, no, no. What? I saw my dad be dedicated. Um, and I saw his habit of building his own wellness build. And that's something that I want for myself. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of that, that he's actually been a tremendous dad. So, um, Anyways, I think like that's something to keep that, in mind when you're talking about being selfish is that it is selfish for you in that moment, but actually it's not because you're impacting the, everyone. the yeah. environment around you. You're um, setting an example. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you get that. My last question before we close up. Okay. Tell the audience about your suggestion if they work a lot. What should they do when it comes to their body? What should they do when it comes to their health and food? And we all know if they take care of their body and they eat well, their mind should work well. And if their mind is in positive chapter, mm -hmm. then those two will actually work even better. Mm -hmm. So tell them, what the advice do you have for those? I think that there's a fine line or uh, between making an excuse and giving yourself grace. So you have to understand that. Another thing is either fearing failure or fearing injury or having faith in resilience. So mm -hmm. really do some work in those areas to understand those um, first to help your mindset. And then from there, it's really just commit to something and be consistent to something. Really every 
uh, exercise program is going to work to some degree if there's consistency in it. I told a client one time when I consulted with her, I was like, it just sounds like you're pretty happy with your life. You're just trying to raise your activity. And the best accountability I can tell you is go get a dog <laughs> and walk the, dog walk the dog on a regular basis. And that's going to give you, she was like, oh, I'm happy with the way my body looks. And I'm, she was so cute. She was like, what am I going to do? Go get a yoga mat and like go to the YMCA. And I was like, uh, if you want to, but it just sounds like it's not, that, that's, exactly. that's the external things that are, you're listening to tell you what to do. And that's not really what you should personally you want. So, um, yeah, figuring out what you want, giving yourself opportunity to develop a toolbox and then going through that process of assessing yourself and seeing what tool is going to be best for you in that time, in that okay. moment or in that period of time. I think someone who's very busy, like I have my schedule can be overwhelming sometimes. I think don't try to do something you don't like or don't do the sport you don't like. You know, um, I think if you don't enjoy doing what you do, you just don't do it for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So if you like walking, you like I, if I want to have a call now, I, I get up and put my headset and walk around my office mm -hmm. and I have my finish my conversation 10 minutes that just walk. I enjoy them outside, right? I, I don't know if you know, average American, it's an hour and 10 minutes of their 24 hours they spent outside. The rest are all inside, mm -hmm. and it's pretty sad. That's why if yeah. I go to a restaurant, I'm actually surprised that it's that high. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Isn't it like feel, it's yeah. sad? Yeah. It's only an hour that you spend out of your 24 hours outside. So when I go to a restaurant, the first thing I'm like, I want to sit outside. Mm -hmm. If we go to the gym, I, it's funny, right? Some people go to the gym and they look for the parking, the closest they can yeah. get to yeah, the right. entrance, right? <laughs> um, so just do. Don't go to the gym. You know, take the walk or do boxing if that's what you like. Dancing, you know, swimming. Just do whatever it is. That's what this video is about, right? Don't mm -hmm. try to just look good mm -hmm. because you want to um, to feel good for others. You yeah. know, just do something for healthy. I think at what point in your age you start thinking about yourself. Um, and what advice do you have for someone who's busy? And yeah, and I want to touch on that for just, I have one little term is that like shifting your own self talk of I have to, mm -hmm. to I get to. Exactly. Yeah. Like we're lucky enough that we get to wake up every day. That little shift of like, I have to go on a run. You don't have to, <laughs> you get yeah. to. Yeah. You get to. And, and if it's a walk, it's fine. Like whatever works for you. Um, I think that for the busy person, it's kind of getting rid of the perfectionism. It's, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Simplify. My biggest piece of advice is to cut up crudite in the refrigerator and prep. Prepare yourself. You know it's coming. You know you're going to have a busy week. So I get those like cheap ball jars and I fill it up so it looks pretty in my fridge. <laughs> I fill it up with like carrots, celery, watermelon radish. And I also find that if you find joy in the kitchen versus anxiety, because when you go in Absolutely. to the kitchen and you say, I have to, or I should eat this, I implore you to play a little bit. Like what foods do you enjoy? Is it a whole food? I like color and that's part of my edible art business is that there's so many beautiful colors in nature. So I get to eat a pretty watermelon radish and I make different things that are easy grab and go so you're not going to the chip drawer. And then also I have something called an incredible, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is fat, fiber, greens, and protein. So you prep those four things in your fridge. And then um, if you like an Asian flavor, you like a Mexican flavor, like have the different spices on hand and then you just put everything in a bowl. And this is really great if you're just a single person and you're not cooking for a family as well. Mm -hmm. What I hear all the time is preparation for getting healthy. And ultimately, I think it's just the mind, right? You just have to mentally prepare yourself and yeah. enjoy it, as I said. Mm -hmm. So enjoy what you eat. Don't beat yourself up, I'm eating I cannot eat carbs. Yes, you can. Yeah. You know, pick the carbs that you can eat. Right. Um, also saying like good food and bad food, like your actual body changes. They've done research about this. Exactly. That if you are eating a donut and you're like, this is so bad for me. And it's, you like shame yourself through this whole process of eating this donut. It's like, if you just say I'm having this donut today because it feels good in this moment and it makes me happy and like, just move on. You don't have to then be like, I've thrown everything. Now I'm off the wagon and now I'm just going to eat junk. We are the only animal on the planet that we 
beat ourselves for our mistakes for yeah. years. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. There's they so much never, shame. No animals yeah. does that. Yeah. They will never remember. And they, they so we just <laughs> go back and like, I can't believe I did that many years ago. It's like, we keep doing that to ourselves. Yeah. Um, That's funny. Um, I, like what I tell clients as far as giving advice for food is like it's either you're eating beneficially or you're indulging mm -hmm. and like and instead of and i do the and same give thing. yourself space yeah. for both you mm -hmm. know i mean unless you're dealing with something super specific and you know that it's yeah. like a short-term thing that you're having to heal your body for specific reasons mm -hmm. but otherwise stick to whole foods as much as you can and if you want to have an indulgent day or mm -hmm. an indulgent moment if you will it's fine yeah right. i think what you were going to touch on probably is like Whenever you eat something and you can and you're and it has guilt already, it mm -hmm. actually sets a whole cascade of hormones. Actually, that does cause you to store more fat. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really yeah, um, it was cool that you brought that up because yeah. it's something that's very important that people all the time. But self talk is a mm -hmm. huge is a huge thing, I... and that's like the self subconscious mind. So the reprogramming and doing those little snippets. There's so many things on YouTube too for that, and um, it really helps with the self talk. Yeah, I, I, I can, we can make this video so long. I, yeah. I learned, I, um, like, I didn't even know if you chew a gum after you eat um, the hormones in your brain that actually tells you, you know, let, let's digest what you already have. So it helps you get rid of what you already had. Yeah. I didn't know that um, when you're eating and if you have a stress, whatever stress you have, whether it's work and your phone, whatever, including I'm always, you know, stress if that's I'm on the phone I have kids and so I learned that your body creates this hormone that it's the same hormone that if you're in Africa and the lion is running after you and you're like running to save your life is the same hormone and which causes that everything else to stop and just run for your life mm -hmm. so if so Fight or that flight. yeah so yeah. If, and then I was like what what does that mean and the doctor said eat very slow Spend 20 minutes, just make sure your body realized now we're eating because then you start digesting because I wasn't digesting and I was not getting rid of what I was eating. And then I had a leaky gut mm -hmm. and I was like, that's not, that's nonsense. And then I started practicing. I'm like, oh my God, you know, and mm -hmm. chew slow, chew with the front of your teeth and on and on. Um, <laughs> I want to close up uh, our segment today. If you can just tell them where they can find you and if talk about your services quickly so our audience can, um, reach out to you. You can find me on www.lifestylecoordination.com and then also in the app store soon you will be able to download the Lifestyle Coordination app where there will be on-demand videos uh, from professionals like Sarah possibly um, <laughs> and other professionals that I have um, made a network of here in LA. Really I'm basing myself right now in Los Angeles and creating a network that gives you some online resources but also these in-person experiences that are so great that we're, especially now we are all craving um, so check out those resources and you'll be able to uh, come to my studio and train we can do virtual training as well strength training um, and then also I have a mobile truck that allows I'm very big into barbell lifting and teaching technique for that correctly and um, the truck has barbells and plates in it and everything oh, yeah, cool. and we can yeah we can come <laughs> everywhere so do you have any discounts for our audience of course Harma um, <laughs> yes so mention that you have subscribed to this video and I will happily provide you with a month of that free access of the online app resources awesome um, you can find me at www.sarahcat.co and on Instagram it's at it's Sarah Cat. Um, I have one-to-one -one coaching, which I don't do as much anymore, but I do have some spaces available for that. I do, I have a, a Valentine's Day virtual mood board making class, which is all about making those infused superfoods and really finding joy in the kitchen. Um, I also do wellness consultant purse for personal households as well as businesses. And I, of course, if you subscribe to Harma's channel, have exclusive discounts for you guys. So if you do want to get your discounts, you have to actually do a screenshot of the subscription <laughs> of the channel, right? Yeah. Um, I'm just joking. I just want to say thank you for watching our videos. If, um, if you like any other video or any topic you would like me to cover, please send me an email or just let us know in the comments and um i appreciate you both doing this um it's very good to know that there are others out there that have the same mindset and i think you should surround yourself with people that you can be on the same page 
um, it's very good to be elevated and you can't be the only one elevating everyone and uh, become selfish, take care of your body, take care of your mind and, um, and thank you for watching and good luck. Today's question is, if you have to give up one thing, it will be chocolate or cheese. Let us know in the comment. Thank you for watching this video. I wanna know what other topics you would like me to make video on. Feel free to leave those in a comment and don't forget to subscribe.